The wife of a man who murdered his two young sons has secured a high court judgment of more than €77,000 against him over their deaths. Kathleen Chada from Ballinkillen in Bagnallstown, County Carlow, sued Sanjeev Chanda, who's serving a life sentence for murder. Viewers may find some of the details in this report upsetting. Sanjeev Chada had misappropriated €56,000 from his local community group in Carlow to fund his online gambling on the stock market. In July 2013, when it was uncovered, he feared for his future and his marriage and decided to kill himself and his two sons. In a letter to his children, he told them he couldn't bear to leave them behind and didn't want them to suffer the pain of a broken home. He strangled 10-year-old Owen and 5-year-old Rory. Their bodies were found in the boot of his car after he had crashed it into a wall near Westport in County Mayo. In October 2014, he was jailed for life after pleading guilty to murder. Harrowing details of the children's last moments and his attempts to end his own life were outlined to the court. His wife Kathleen said she thought she knew her husband and they were a normal family. She asked how could evil have been hidden for so long in a seemingly loving father. More than two years later, Kathleen Chada took a civil action against her husband, suing him for assault, battery and trespass to the person, causing the deaths of her two sons. Mr Justice Seamus Noonan granted judgment in the sum of more than €77,500. The judge said it wasn't necessary for Mrs Chada to give evidence in the case, which he described as an unspeakable tragedy. Vivian Trainer, RTE News. Well, yesterday in the High Court, Kathleen Chada, whose husband murdered their two young sons, Owen just 10 and Worry just 5, three years ago, was awarded just over €77,000 against her husband for the killings. He's currently serving a life sentence for their murders. Here's a reminder of those horrific events. Their mother raised the alarm in the early hours of this morning, and Gardaí put a child rescue plan into operation with nationwide media alerts. But the alert was stood down after Gardaí attending a single vehicle accident outside Westport in County Mayo this afternoon found the bodies of 10-year-old Owen and his 5-year-old brother Rory in the car. Sanjeev Chada was brought to the courthouse here in Swinford from Westport Garda Station. He arrived just after 9 o'clock tonight. On July 28th last year, he said he was taking the boys to a bowling alley but instead he took them to a remote location, slept in his car overnight and strangled them in the early hours of the morning. Today the 44-year-old pleaded guilty to murder. Harrowing details of the children's last moments were outlined to the court. In her victim impact statement, Kathleen Chada asked how could she live with the knowledge of those last moments and how scared her sons must have been. She said she thought she knew her husband. Her boys had died in a cruel and violent way. She asked how could evil such as this have been hidden for so long in a seemingly loving father. And I'm now joined by Kathleen Chada. Kathleen, thanks so much for coming in here Thank tonight. You. Yesterday, the judge reminded us in court, he called it this unspeakable tragedy. Three years on, how are you doing now? Um, I'm okay. There's good days and bad days. Um, there's ups and downs and it's, gonna, it's a constant up and down I suppose I won't say it's a constant battle mm -hmm. um, every day but you know there are days where you wake up in the morning and don't want to get up don't want to do anything um, and then there are days that are good um, and I suppose at this stage there are probably more good days than there are bad ones now so it's I'm getting there you had no forewarning sure you didn't Kathy no sign of what was going to follow you thought he was taking your two little boys bowling bowling yeah and we'd had, as people know, there, he had embezzled money that had just um, been discovered uh, about 10 days beforehand. So, um, as you can imagine, between us, things were somewhat tense. Um, but I would never have expected this of him. Um, right up until the moment, and I was only reminded of it recently, right up until the moment that I got the phone call um, to confirm, I thought, he's got the boys with him, he'll be okay. That was my thought. The thought that he would ever hurt Owen or Rory was just not there um, in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, and it was he himself who told you what he'd done. Is that correct? Yeah. He phoned me. He had just crashed the car um, outside Westport and he, um, I found out after I had borrowed a phone, he'd left his own phone at home so he'd borrowed a phone and um, phoned me himself. So. 
I was in the middle of giving a statement to one of the detectives at the time and um, got the phone call and just dropped us and uh, everything stems from that really. And you know, people often wonder how, how they would cope if something so awful would happen. How did you cope at that moment? Um, it, it, there's, no, there's no answer to that. There's no mm. real answer to that. I, you just do. And it is one of the things, the most common things that people will say is, I wouldn't be able to do it, or how, mm. how do you do it? And there isn't actually an answer to it as such. You just do. Um, I suppose I consider myself quite lucky. I came from a very close, very strong family background. Um, I've got good friends. Uh, good community around me, good family, good colleagues in work. So um, all of that helps. It brings your support and you, I mean, I talk about being held um, by family and community and, and I have been. Um, not swamped and not overwhelmed by it, but actually people are just there and they, they're supportive, they're caring. Um, and that all brings it, I suppose, brings you to the next day. Um, and I'm doing it for the boys. That's the reality I want to survive. And it's not in me to give up. It's not me to, to turn around and decide that there's an alternative. It just isn't me. So um, you find the strength from somewhere. And I do believe that it's in all of us, ultimately. Um, I wouldn't have said four years ago it was in me. But I discovered three and a half years ago that it was. So. But the remarkable thing that you were saying to me earlier, you, you're not bitter. You're not angry. No. But that's remarkable. How, how, how can you be like that? Is it that you've got a great faith? Faith is part of it. There's no doubt about that. Um, I refuse to be bitter. There is some anger at times. There are moments and there are, you know, there, there is a certain amount of it. But I don't want to get consumed by that. Mm. I don't want to live my life um, with bitterness. Because mm. right up until that moment, um, or the days beforehand, we were a happy family. We were a normal day-to-day -day family. Um, I loved my husband, I loved my children. Um, I believe he did, felt the same way. Um, it was all normal. Um, so if I allow bitterness to mm. creep in and take over that, I lose those memories. Um, and they're, they're what keep me going. Did he express remorse over what he did? Um, the day in court, I've only seen him twice, um, uh, over in the West when he was presented with a book of evidence, and then the day in court, I had to walk past him as I came back from giving the victim impact statement, and he said, I'm sorry. Um, I do believe he meant it. I think it was probably the most sincere apology that I am likely to get from him, to be honest. Um, I, I do believe he's sorry, but it doesn't matter anymore. It makes no difference. It can't change what he did. So sorry isn't acceptable anymore. Um, you know, sorry for what he had done before taking the boys. Yeah, we might have gotten through that, but sorry after that, no, that's, that's, it's just not acceptable. And in court yesterday, when uh, you got this 77,000, you're never going to receive any no. of that money. So it was almost, was it just a legal box ticking? And what did you hope to achieve? Um, pretty much what happened, yeah. which was just ticking that box. It's part of the separation process for me. It's part of ensuring that um, the house mm. is, is mine. It's our home, myself and the boys. It's where they were brought up uh, it's got all of their things in it their toys their clothes so it's important to me that I keep that and um, I believe I will I don't know that I necessarily had to go through yesterday to do that but it just gave that extra little bit of of comfort I suppose to know that that's there uh, I didn't expect this from that I didn't expect it to be um, newsworthy for want of a better word some of my family didn't even know that it was happening and um, because to me it was just part of a a process so um, that it, it became <laughs> the 6-1 news uh, or part of that I, I w was a surprise but um, you know that's okay that's just it's part of what I'm doing now so. And finally Kathleen you really believe you're going to be reunited don't you with Rory and Ellen? I do. I have a strong faith and I, I, I suppose I, I feel if I didn't have that belief and if I thought that 
I wasn't going to see them again. It would be a very lonely place. So I do believe that I will be with them again. Kathleen, you're a remarkable person and the fact that you came in here, I really appreciate it and I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank Thanks you so much.